Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous and Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Well, update 15 is now with us. Finally, it seems like an age since it was first announced. And with it come not only quality of life improvements, but also new aspects of gameplay. Not to mention new Thargoids. And will we find out what's in that maelstrom? Yes, it's all about update 15. It seems like it's been coming for an absolute age for Elite Dangerous. So what's in and what's not? Well, the Elite Dangerous release notes for update 15 have been put on social media, message boards, you name it. And it's evident from what's included in the patch notes that a lot is left for the old commander to turn round and discover for themselves. Now, a couple of community commanders who are part of the Frontier Community Program have already had a sneak peek into the video and gameplay of what's already been included and released for Update 15. This has been a new mission, a new Thargoid ship, there's been skimmers, and these are featured in the Features of Notes, okay? They mention this new mission to restore power to settlements and retrieve data from within Thargoid controlled territory. Now Thargoid controlled ter territory, this is where the Maelstrom has come straight in and Thargoids are starting to expand their footprint on the Elite Dangerous Galaxy. You're going to have Thargoid controlled systems and the bases there will be abandoned. And this is what they're talking about here. This new mission can be found at boards, in systems, in the alert or invasion states. Great, good stuff. Can't wait to get in there and see these revenants. Now the revenants are like skimmers, right? Little skimmers, little little scavengers, right? That we've seen at the existing Thargoid bases that we've been knocking around with. Great, can't wait for that. Um, and I've got a video out there of what a base in controlled Thargoid space actually looks like without them. So it'd be good to do a good compare and contrast and see what sort of gameplay this adds into them. Also another update of note is the Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer module, which has been added to outfitting and tech brokers at all rescue ships. Again, this is exciting. This is all about the maelstroms that have been coming in. You venture too far into the maelstrom and you're going to start incurring caustic damage. You venture even further and then you're going to be pushed back by a pulse, a Thargoid Pulse. And this Thargoid Pulse Neutralizer counteracts this. Good stuff. Now, they did run a community goal where the top commanders, the top 10 commanders who went through and either defended against pirates for the shipments of bringing in um, Grelics or unidentified artifacts, which you can get from the Thargoid bases by putting in Guardian Relics and then converting them or transmognifying them like an alchemist sort of thing into um, unclassified Relics or Grelics. Um, delivering them, delivering other items. You can go in there, you can do pirate protection missions as well. That's run for about a week, but those top 10 commanders would also qualify for one of the Thargoid Pulse Neutralizers. And they can find theirs stored at the Oren Miller Mega Ship. Now we've already mentioned the Revenant seeks you, the Revenant, and these are the Thargoid kind of scavenger-like drones that are going to be patrolling the abandoned bases in Thargoid occupied space. So those are the features of note. What they haven't mentioned in there, which is interesting, is the new Thargoid ship variant. Not sure whether this is an omission or, or by design. Are we going to find more of those in the maelstroms as we venture in further? We don't know and we are going to have to wait and see. But their omission from the patch notes to me that just did a few alarm bells. I thought, ooh, ooh, they've forgotten that. Perhaps that alludes to something a little bit different. But we'll have to wait and see about that. Moving on to the issues of note that have been addressed. This is the what's in part of Elite Dangerous Odyssey Update 15. So reactivation missions, uh, those bases will no longer be already powered up. Great, fantastic, tick in the box. Teammate Navlock issue. They say this is huge because it's not working as intended, and now it is, and they do thank you for this, for your patience. Ship kits, no, and they say loner, but it is longer, result in caustic damage being multiplied. This is great because I do like 
the construction ship kits on the Python and Anaconda. I do think it makes the ships look a little bit special. So that was a known bug, a known error. I didn't know about that until it came up on the live stream when I was streaming with all my ship kits on and I couldn't work out why my ship was disintegrated, but that's been sorted out. That's absolutely fantastic. Carrier jumps can now longer be accidentally scheduled by dragging or rotating the map with a mouse. Great, I've done that myself and it's been a bit of a pain. Distance now correctly displays when remotely jumping your fleet carrier. Brilliant, again, good quality of, uh, of life update there. Landed Apex taxis will no longer randomly decide to disembark when keys are pressed in menus. Not add that one. Improvements have been made to the midnight paint job, which was appearing outlined. Good, because it was all very dark. Um, Scarab SRV radar schematic sizing has been improved. Scarab SRV is no longer missing projectiles. Brilliant, because it was so hard when you missed those tracing bullet shots when you're doing your Scarab SRV missions. Utterly ridiculous. I couldn't understand why, why that was missing, but they've addressed it and it's been fixed. Ancient Active Guardian Obelisks will no longer display a random moving pattern, which caused difficulties with decrypting the items for RAM. The Red Herring TARS mission. Interesting. There's a, there's a few other things as well, right? We're going to skip through them. Um, scan organic event now contains variant colour. No idea what that's about. That's something about the journal. Odyssey system map now display, displays active faction states as expected. And they've done some typos. Commander's legs no longer detach from their bodies after throwing a grenade mid-jump. I've seen this. This is crazy. And then the VR shipyard camera positioning has been corrected. VR codex and squadron screens brightness have been adjusted. See, VR, still little tweaks. Um, fixed reported instance where Thargoids can become invisible. Not seen that one either. Or if I haven't seen them, perhaps they were invisible and that's why I died. And an issue with exceeding yield when detonating asteroids has also been addressed. Apex shuttle pilots no longer too nervous to land at hostile settlements. Come on, get in there. Um, and then settlement raid and massacre missions require more targets than the president present. Yes, how many times have we been down on a base on the streams and it requires more targets than are actually there? What a level of frustration that was. But it's been addressed. Fantastic. And there's more. Quite a bit of work has been done with the AI as well. Thargoid ships no longer stray too far away in AX combat zones. Thargoid scouts now pay comparatively more attention to ships than ground targets. Apex shuttles can now navigate around binary moons and ambient traffic will be present if commanders are on foot in space stations. Good. Ship launch fighters will now restock their ammo when returning to the mothership. I mean, duh, come on. That is a key thing they've turned round and done. So those are the updates of Note, which I think are really good. I mean, moving on now to gameplay, right? Um, quite a few gameplay fixes there. I mean, these are quality of life fixes. You know, I'm not going to go through them here, but let's just pick out one or two. I mean, shooting guardian relics as they rise will no longer cause them to become irretrievable. That's a good one. Uh, on foot commanders will now receive inbox message arrival notifications. Again, a real good one as well. Um, in regards to graphics and the render, visual improvements have been made to fog rendering. We've noticed this, I think, as well at the Thargoid bases on the weekend. It looked absolutely terrible. It used to look better than this. They've fixed directional light shadowing. They've fixed mining hotspots. They've fixed an issue with dithering effects and low resolutions and fixed issues whereby entering or exiting super crews would cause fog. Not seen that one. Audio a hosts of fixes in regards to audio and in regards to the art as well there's been some graphical fixes around the ui also around some of the print jobs also around visual issues with faction colors on stations as well some back-end fixes as well in regards to the server fixed invitees already in crew now some of this stuff is key for it to be working and a lot of this got fixed i think in update 13. Um, you know, which made it a more playable game with your friends, because there was a hell of a lot of level of frustration there. So there's been an awful lot of back-end server fixes as well, and some UI changes. Representations of multiple fleet carriers can now be stacked on a system map. 
data displayed on the right hand panels have been moved around to be more sensical. So that's going to be quite interesting in regards to the map. And contacts panel now displays soldier rank rather than combat rank. Good. That's good stuff. Consumable slot data will now be present on the suit loadout customization panel and frontline solutions map now disables the view planetary map button when selecting stations. All good stuff. Visual effects have been tweaked as well in regards to the dolphin cargo hatch to improve legibility and festive cockpit lights glow have been lowered. They were a bit garish, weren't they? There's still a few known issues that haven't been addressed in regards to um, some missions. Commanders are unable to plot a route to settlements, ports through the points of interest panel. That's still in game. So this is the what's not been fixed and also reboot missions especially Thargoid war missions, do not currently count towards Jude Navarro engineer progression, which is a bit of a pain. There's been crashes and locks at Thargoid barnacle sites, that still occurs, and also ranking up engineers by modifying modules does not unlock higher tier modifications without reopening the workshop, and that is key if you're going to do some engineering. Anyway, update 15. Let's see how this goes when it gets released into the wild, everybody. Will there be an update 15.01? More than likely, if we look back empirically on how some of the updates go. But we can rest assured with Frontier, they'll be there and on it to address any concerns or glaring problems that may have escaped um, their quality control system. I've been Ricardo, thanks very much for watching this video on the Update 15 patch notes, what's in and what's not. Let's hope we all enjoy it, and let's hope it's a really good update. See you soon.